Hey there everybody, this is 22TigerDude here and I'm here to review Where the Wild Things Are. So before I do review Where the Wild Things Are, my guest star, Mighty Mega Man 9, aka Tim, is going to be reviewing this film. So Tim, take it away. Thank you, Tony. And um, if you don't know me, I am Tim Skylabberth. You may know me as Mighty Mega Man 9 on YouTube. I do uh, a show called The Adventures of Howie. I do snack days, hard talk reviews, and I also do movie reviews, as well as theory videos. I am um, collaborating with Tony for the uh, movie Where the Wild Things Are. Directed by Spike Jones and was released in 2009. This is a fantastic movie. There, I said it, a fantastic movie. And it's about a young boy named Max who is he's a rambunctious young man. He's just into the whole imagination and he's just he he's exactly kinda like me growing up. Because I've always uh I I never had like friends and I just always daydreamed a lot and just felt like I was a part of someone of something but having these beings you know and um the whole movie shows that like he, he goes to this faraway place even being their leader it can't like happen a lot even as a young boy in where he's at it's exactly like being a grown-up everything is just cinematography is fantastic um, it was by it's based on a book by Maurice Sandak who has done the um, little bear books and uh, I swear um, Spike Jones really did this and I think he really connected you, you could tell he connected with the Max character a lot you, you, we're talking about the guy who did jackass so it's like you can tell he really um, really really connected with this character and connected with the author um, so uh, Tony thank you thank you for um, having me be a part of this and like what you said um, I'll be doing a lot of collab videos with you you're an awesome person and uh, this is my first collaboration so um, thanks thank you so much Mighty Mega Man 9 aka Tim for reviewing where the wild things are so, as Tim did say, Where the Wild Things Are is directed by Spike Jones. Spike Jones also wrote this film, and he actually does the voice of Terry and Bob, these birds that are in the film, which is pretty neat. Now, when it comes to Where the Wild Things Are, I actually really admire this film. This is a PG rated film, but personally, I really don't think it's a film for kids. I, it's not a film I even recommend kids see, to be honest, because it's so mature, honestly, that I think it's one of those PG rated films that I think teenagers and adults can enjoy more than I think the little kids. I think little kids are actually going to be scared watching this film and some of the things are going to be too heavy for them, I personally believe, at least. But I remember when I saw this film back in 2009 when it released in theaters, um, I had really no expectations for this film and I walked out of the theater going, Man, I am so glad I saw Where the Wild Things Are in theaters because it really was a treat. And even to this day, this is a movie that so holds up. I still enjoy this movie as much as I do, as much as I did when I saw it in theaters back in 2009. Uh, it's one of those movies that you definitely admire the more you definitely watch it. And that's definitely the case with this film. I admire Where the Wild Things Are. This is such a unique very inventive, very imaginative film, and it's adapted from a book, and man, it's unlike anything you've seen from a children's film. Like I said, I don't consider it a children's movie personally, but that's how this film is categorized as, and it works, honestly. The style of Where the Wild Things Are really is so unique. I really love being in this world. I love the character of Max, played so well by Max Records. He did a great job just capturing this boy that is so full of imagination. He's just a little boy that just wants to have his own imagination. He's pretty much 
one that likes to daydream, but he's in this world where no one accepts him. The sister is really neg neglectful. The mother can be pretty neglectful too because she has other things in her life. And then she even has her boyfriend played by Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo actually makes a small appearance in this film, which was very cool personally. So you already feel bad for Max the minute the movie starts. And I really was rooting for him. I cared for Max. I want him to go out and explore his imagination. And I thought the film captured the awe and wonder of this young boy having imagination. They really captured that very well because it's true when we're little, we have our own imagination. We grow up just having these fantasies and I thought where wild things are portrayed, uh, having that kind of fantasy very well. And when you see Max with these beasts or monsters, it's really cool. And speaking of the monsters, I thought everyone did a very great job. First of all, the people that had to do the puppetry for the beasts or monsters great job really great puppetry it really looks like they're moving it really does look like max is actually talking to them like physically like it doesn't look like he's pretending or acting like he's talking to them it looks like he's actually physically talking to them and if you were there you actually believe they're real so that's really amazing puppetry right there and i thought everyone was great james gandolfini just fantastic as Carol. Absolutely amazing. His voice fit the personality of the character. And I actually can't see a voice matching Carol better than James Gandolfini. The guy is just so talented. He's an amazing actor. And it's no exception in Where the Wild Things Are. He's great when it comes to his voice work with this film. Also, there's also Lauren Ambrose as KW. She's the one that's more of the downer in this film. And I thought she actually did a very good job conveying the overall personality of KW, carrying that personality. There's also Paul Dano, who he plays Alexander, which is a goat. And I thought he was absolutely terrific as that character. Really interesting to see Paul Dano here. And then there's also Chris Cooper as Douglas, who was also great. Forrest Whitaker as Ira, who was just also really great. Catherine O'Hara as Judith, really great as well. Michael Berry Jr. as Bernard the Bull. Uh, everyone, honestly, just great work across the board as far as their voices and the way they all interact with the character Max, who for the majority of the movie is the only live action character there. It all feels like they're interacting. That's very impressive. The script to Where the Wild Things Are is very well written. I thought it was a very nice, like I said, a very nice story of this boy that just has all of these fantasies. And just the adventures, the simple adventure that him and these characters go through um, were really good, honestly. I would say the more lighthearted ones. Anytime they're just out having fun, it honestly puts a smile on my face. I'll get to the tone of this film in a little bit, but I'm going to say anytime this film is happy, when it's just Max and all these other characters just being happy, having fun, it was really, really great. And the moments where it's just Max and Carol, like especially this one major scene where you don't really see the other beasts for a while, it's just one major scene in the film where it's just Max and Carol, and it's by far one of the best scenes and where the wild things are. I loved that major scene that we got in this film. It's all so well done. And of course, Spike Jones has amazing cinematography. This movie has stunning cinematography to it. And not only is the cinematography so stunning, but the soundtrack is so wonderful. I love the soundtrack and where the wild things are. It really it's the tone, the style that Spike Jones brings in this film. It's so fascinating. Honestly, the soundtrack is music to my ears, and I could honestly listen to the soundtrack forever. It truly is breathtaking listening to the soundtrack of Where the Wild Things Are. And then I also do think that, like I said, it's just a very well-directed film. And when you do get to the ending of Where the Wild Things Are, I'm not going to lie, the last seven minutes of the film, 
it really hits me in the feels. I'm not gonna lie, the last seven minutes of where the wild things are really does hit me with the feels. And without spoiling anything, it's just a very satisfying payoff on where the film ends. And it honestly does have personally just one of my favorite endings to a movie. I loved how the film ended and how it cut to the end credits was beautiful. It didn't feel abrupt or anything. It was just calm. It was soothing. It was relaxing. And honestly, for a movie like this, it was the perfect ending. I like, I don't see them ending the movie anywhere else than where they ended. The ending to Where the Wild Things Are, I honestly do consider to be perfect, to be honest. Now, however, the movie itself, I don't find to be perfect. There are flaws, mainly just a few, but I do have one major flaw. Now, when it comes to one of my flaws, the movie is a little bit slow paced once Max does meet the beasts. I thought the beasts, um, you know, once Max meets them, that scene goes on for like about 10 minutes. I even noticed while watching the film, that entire scene is like 10 minutes long and it and it goes a little too long in my opinion like the movie's very well paced the setup is really great you get behind max then once he actually sees these beasts for the first time it does get a little bit slow to be honest once the film is in the daytime like once it's the daytime after that 10 minute scene that's when the pacing picks back up but before that i was all like um okay let's go ahead and speed things up a bit this is actually dragging on a little too long also i did feel like that carol the character uh he wasn't that likable it was so hard to get behind this character and i actually got behind him when we get introduced but then as you learn more about this character, I actually start to really not like him. And it made the film so out of place, like when he gets angry. And yes, there's a reason, but he goes too far. And I don't see any reason for him to go that far. And that's where it leads to my biggest problem personally with where the wild things are. And that's honestly the tone. I think this is a very inconsistent movie when it comes to the tone because I think when it comes to the tone it's not that perfectly balanced and because of that it can take me out of the movie just sometimes it can honestly be very distracting like one moment the film is all light-hearted everything is nice then it abruptly shifts to something very serious then the film all of a sudden gets heartwarming and it's nice heart that's the other thing when the movie is heartwarming and not serious it's very nice but then the movie shifts back to being happy and then it shifts to being serious and then the film as it goes along it just gets more darker and more personal and when the film does get dark and serious it feels so out of place there's nothing wrong with being dark because there have been plenty of children's films out there that have been dark but for where the wild things are the dark scenes felt so out of place and i felt so uncomfortable personally sitting through these dark and serious moments because it didn't really fit in my opinion and it would take away some of the fun like there would be a scene where the characters are just all happy but then something will be ruined by a certain character. Say, for example, it could be Carol that ruins the fun, or it could be KW, obviously the downer that could ruin the fun. And then you're just going from, oh my God, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, to, oh, oh, uh, okay, okay, so it's serious now. Just a second ago, you were all happy and lighthearted, and now you're all dark and serious. Oh. Okay, okay, I'm starting to feel uncomfortable now. Can we get back to the happy stuff? It just didn't really work personally, in my opinion. And there's one scene where I thought they took the dark level way too far. It deals with Carol, and it's in the third act of the film. You know, you know what I'm talking about if you've seen this film, but personally, I felt like Carol just... The film took it too far, personally, in the third act, in this one specific scene that made me go, was that really necessary? Was that really necessary? So personally, when the film shifts from being happy, to dark, to serious, to happy, to the, you know what I mean, 
Um, I personally had a huge problem with that and it does take me out of the film honestly in some scenes. But overall, you guys, while Where the Wild Things Are is very inconsistent with its tone, I'm not going to lie, I have a big problem when it comes to the tone, that doesn't stop me from overall admiring the film because even with the inconsistent tone, there's still more I liked about the film than I disliked. I admired the style. I thought it was very original. Yes, it's based off of a book, but just the film within itself was so unique. It was so original. There's so much to admire. And where the wild things are, it is so gorgeously shot. Spike Jones did a great job directing the film. The performances, whether it be voices or live action performances, are so great. It explores having your own imagination so well, and it is truly one of those films that just ends on a very satisfying note. It's, it pays off so well. Where the Wild Things Are, I do like a lot. I like it quite a bit. It's a good movie overall, so I'm going to give it three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Where the Wild Things Are. And I would also love to give a huge thank you to my guest star, Mighty Mega Man 9, aka Tim, for reviewing this film with me. He's a very nice guy, you guys. He has a very cool channel. Like he said when he introduced himself, he, do he does all kinds of things on his channel like snack talk theory videos reviews all that stuff so you guys if you guys want to check out his channel i will leave a link in the description down below this is 22 tiger dude here and don't forget that i will always have tiger power